folks, Mike Schramke, Jason Coward with Larry Stove Sand Equipment, America's largest selling coyote dealer. Jason has uh, recently done two videos on uh, backhoe removal and front end loader removal. So if, uh, if you need that kind of assistance, by all means, find those videos. Today, though, uh, Jason is going to show us how to properly hook up a typical three point PTO driven implement. What he'll show us is relevant uh, for this rotary cutter, a finishing mower, a tiller, post hole digger, pretty much any of the three point implements. And uh, it's not hard, but if nobody's ever showed you how to do it, then, then you know, well, then it's a conundrum. So, uh, what we have is a Coyote DK4210 SE and a Titan 1206 rotary cutter and a genius to show you how to do it. Jason? <laughs> All right, folks, how y'all doing? Um, this is like a kind of like a basic model. So we're, this is as hard as it's ever going to get right here. And uh, if you got a little extra money and you want to make it easier, they make some uh, quick attachment stuff. But we have uh, telescopic lower links. And um, and there's other systems. There's pats. Yes, there um, are. I have a know, set. If, uh, if you're watching this and, and, you know, we didn't sell you the tractor or, or you know, you're far, far away, uh, the patch system, there's a billion videos out there, is, is pretty awesome, as is Coyote's telescopic lower link end option. Folks, well, so let's look a little closer at what Jason was just talking about. Uh, compact tractors oftentimes are standard, like this one is, with this type of lower link. It's the same system that Harry Ferguson, the British inventor, patented in the 1920s and it was first seen on the uh, Ford N-Series. Henry Ford and Harry Ferguson hooked up. It was called the Ferguson system, and it's still in use today, unchanged. Um, there is one thing you could do to make it more convenient, and that would be to use telescopic link ends. Uh, if the tractor doesn't have it standard, like many of ours do, it is uh, generally always an option. Uh, the standard version, you would back the tractor up, and when you get the lower link lined up with the pin of the implement, you simply slide it onto it. Um, precision is necessary and it, you know you have to get right right where it needs to be. Uh, let me show you the other way that you can also do it. When you start getting into needing to hook up larger implements like this eight foot cutter, telescopic link ends would be a uh, great help. Um, I'll show you what they look like without the implement on it. Generally, the larger tractors and the premium series tractors have telescopic link ends standard, but as I said, you can get them on, uh, on tractors that do not come standard with them. Telescopic link end, you back the tractor up, say this is the implement and the pins are right here. All you have to do is back the uh, tractor up and uh, move this down a little bit. Depress this, it comes in and out three inches and goes up and down two inches. So you only have to get close to the implement to hook it up. A great convenience and uh, the bigger and bigger implement that you're selecting, the more important something like this might be to consider. All right, so this is how it's gonna look. I'm gonna back up to it and get close. And uh, also uh, Coyote has this uh, lever in the back on a lot of our tractors for allowing you to raise and lower your three point from behind the tractor. It's really, really nice. So let me, let's get started. All right. All right, folks, I kind of got over top of my pins because uh, I have my turnbuckles loose, so I've got a lot of play in my, in my lower links. So I'm gonna lower this. The tractor's not running, but it'll, uh, it'll come down. It won't go back up without it running, but it'll come down. All right. 
night. I left this tractor in neutral so that I could uh, roll it back just by grabbing one of the treads a little bit. I am on concrete, may not be able to do that on anything else, but I just pulled it back a little bit to line up my pins here. There's your first one. That's also your adjustable one. I'm gonna go around the other side. By adjustable, and part of what he's going to show you, this implement needs, needs to ride evenly level. Um, and sometimes you do not want it level. For example, so there's, there's situations in a box scraper where you may want to tilt the box scraper at five degrees or so to bring the, uh, the, the, the debris um, back toward the center of the driveway. But for this purpose, level is, is good. Absolutely. So now I've got my lower links hooked up and uh, they're pinned. Nothing's been adjusted yet. I've just got them on. But if you find that one of your lower links will slide on, but the other one's too high or too low, that's where you'll make your adjustment here. And this raises and lowers the left hand, or your uh, passenger side, right hand side link. And obviously it is a jam nut. So when you, uh, when you leave the barn to do this project, you will need a wrench. Yeah, absolutely. And now I'm gonna hook up my top link. Also has jam nuts. Yeah, so a pretty good size adjustable wrench. I use two, an adjustable wrench and an adjustable wrench with the spud on it for that's, holding it tight. That spud wrench, by the way, the tapered one, when you're trying to line up holes, if he was on mud or dirt, he could have shoved that spud wrench in there and with leverage line the holes up. It's a wonderful device. Get a spud wrench. Absolutely. All right, I've got my lower links hooked up. I've got my top link that hooked is up. three point, one, two, three. Absolutely, and now I'm gonna slide on my, my drive shaft. It has a thumb, you can see right here. that is the collar. Uh, that is the collar that he'll be uh, releasing the, the pressure on as he slides it onto the spine. Right, and your PTO shaft won't spin, but your drive shaft will. On this cutter, I'm on the ground, but it'll still spin. If you're using a tiller or something like that, you may have to hook up your three points and then get the tiller off the ground a little bit so that when you, you can actually turn your drive shaft. To get the splines to match. Roger. Chances are, I mean, mathematically speaking, the odds that they'll just automatically but he's, he's going to find where they, where they match. And as he turns, the, uh, the blade of this rotary cutter is actually turning as well, like you said. In my opinion, what he's doing right now is the, uh, the hardest and, and most frustrating thing. I, I don't find trouble in anything else. Uh, keep that spline extremely greased. Uh, you don't want to fight yourself. Absolutely. Now I push the pin in and I slid it past the groove on the PTO shaft. I let go of the pin and I'm going to pull back on it to make sure it's locked in place. Yeah, he felt the distinctive click when he pushed it in, but still, yes, try to take it off. Pull it, pull it with, with some authority and if it doesn't come off, it's, it's on. Absolutely. Uh, this, um, this right here, this little chain right here, we just wrap them around. All this is going to do is keep your uh, plastic shroud from spinning with the drive shaft. The drive shaft spins inside of this, so all you really need to do is wrap it around your top link once you got it hooked up. The shroud up. protects you from ever getting anything caught. Uh, long hair, a sleeve, a pant leg in, the, in the, the moving PTO, although you shouldn't be anywhere close to the shaft while it's moving. Um, that's what that guard is for. Do people always leave the guards on? No, uh, it's it's entirely up to you. We highly recommend leaving guard on, but uh, yeah, the machine operates uh, without the guard. In either case, don't get near a moving PTO shaft. Roger. So now I've got it hooked up. I'm gonna start the tractor up. I'm gonna get it lifted up off the ground so I can make my adjustments to it to yeah, get it level. because all those jam nuts are still loose, all of them.
All right, uh, I fired up the tractor, I raised up my three point, I got it off the ground, and uh, because my, uh, my lower links, my left and right movement is controlled by these turnbuckles on the side and they're loose, you'll notice that uh, my cutter can sway. Yeah, not good. We wanted, what you wanna do is just kinda look, get behind it, take a look at it. If your drive shaft is straight, down the middle. It's a little tiny bit to the left, as you could tell. And yeah, just, uh, you know, perfection is not uh, required, but close is good. And then you'll make, you're gonna, this is where we'll tighten up our left and right turn buckles. I'm just doing it by hand at the moment. Until it firms up and. See, I can actually move this, this thing by just cranking on it once yeah, you pull it to the yeah, left. Yeah, once it's once it's firm, if you keep going, it'll start the, the implement will start drifting to the left or to the right. Do the same thing on the other side. Make them both equally stiff, equally firm. As when he's got that, he'll take one last look to see if he thinks it's aligned and notice he kicked it, it did not move. Right. See, now we're tight. Only oh, it's just I'm wanting to move the tractor now. Yep. Okay, so now they're tight, and I'm going to tighten up my my jam nuts. And this is where the spud comes in handy for me, anyway. Um, I like to slide my spud down in here to hold this part of the turnbuckle while I snug up. You don't have to get crazy with it. I never, I never knew that's what those wings were for. There, so you can hold it while you with one wrench while you tighten that jam nut with the other. Well, now I know. Okay, so Jason uh, tightened up the jam nut. Would you point to the jam nut? There's our jam nut. Okay, and he, he tightened it by hand and then he firmed it up using leverage of the spud wrench and there it is that's very tight and will that stay tight forever and ever so you you can't just go cut with this thing and, and never check it again you need to be checking these things every couple of hours and if you're cutting all day long you should be checking it two or three times a day because this thing will start to sway on you things get out of whack and then stuff starts breaking yeah the uh, the turnbuckle can and will fall off if it's not snugged often and when that happens, you'll then immediately run over the turnbuckle and you'll curse and uh, come and buy a new turnbuckle. Uh, the turnbuckles, you know, when Harry Ferguson in invented this system in the 1920s, uh, this system hasn't changed. So if your tractor has, uh, those are called check chains, if your tractor has check chains that are made out of turnbuckles with a jam nut, uh, they will loosen unless you tighten them. Um, the last thing I think is, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to let you do it because you got to talk about leveling and then uh, the pitch for and aft. Right. And once again, you can see that we've tightened up left and right. Yeah, that, that cutter is now part of the tractor. So she doesn't want to move like she did before. Now, um, you want to take a look in the back of it. And now we're, we're kind of looking at pitch here, left and right. She's pretty centered up left to right like this mm -hmm. and but that's adjusted by your right side turnbuckle if I tighten this up it'll bring up this lower link tilting it to the left or vice versa yep but since we're level now I'm gonna tighten up this if you're doing something that nut. requires extreme accuracy like a snow blade on concrete You'll, you, you could actually just put a level on the implement. Rotary cutter, just get close. There again, very, very tight, and uh, it won't stay that way forever. And then uh, how would you make the back end, if, if you're in a situation like you'd, you'd like the back end pitched up or down, what, what, what adjusts that? All that adjustment is done here on your on top, top link, if you'll watch it. I, uh, it's got weight on it right now, so I'll have to use a little bit of leverage here with my wrench, but. So if you're adjusting the pitch uh, right, right now, aft, it, it should be raising up. 
and lo and behold it is so a box scraper or cutter finishing mower it is important we when we deliver a tractor the uh, the back end of the rotary cutter will be at a slight incline towards the back um, but different implements different pitches different approach of attack of the implement but that is that is how you increase or decrease the angle of attack of the implement is by the top length. That uh, it's ready to use, and Jason, if you would, I'd like to talk just one last moment about startup. I'd like to show when you start, and Jason could do this if he doesn't mind uh, after he tightens that, that jam nut. When you start this or any PTO driven implement, to, to be kind to the implement, start it at low RPMs, and also for safety, make sure there's nobody in the area. Uh, when you, when you uh, turn it on, this one has an electric over hydraulic PTO, so he'll start the tractor at idle, and he'll add a couple hundred RPMs, and then he'll engage the electric PTO switch, and you'll hear a dramatic sound as it, as it uh, spools up. And then he'll rev it, to the full operating RPMs indicated on the dash. So let's 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 take a look. He'll start it at low RPMs and then spool it up. Gotcha. Start the Once it reaches its centrifugal force, up it goes. Now, when he turns it off, make no bo you know make no mistake that thing's going to spin for a while. It has finished spinning, but just by shutting off the PTO, that thing has to uh, has to wind down. It has to spool down. So avoid any contact with the implement until you're darn sure that it stops spinning. Some of them go for a long time. Flail mowers, for example, go for a long time. Finishing mowers go for a long time. These uh, not so much, but they do go for a few seconds. Uh, don't don't approach the machine. And also, folks. Uh why we're talking about engaging and disengaging your PTO. What you've got is a hydraulic clutch inside the transmission. And that clutch is what helps slow this thing down and it's also what's transferring power. You have to start this thing at an idle, kick on your PTO, then bring it up to speed. When you shut, when you don't wanna shut this thing off until you brought your idle, brought it back down to an idle, let it slow down and then disengage it. it yeah, it's not reasonable to expect it you know, you wouldn't dump the clutch on your on your car any more than you would on this. Uh, so start it slow, and then spool that sucker up. Absolutely. That's all it. Right. That's any, it. All right. That's all I got. Folks, thanks for watching. Mike Schramke, Jason Cowart, Larry Stove Sand Equipment, Nashville, Tennessee, America's largest selling coyote dealer. And there is a, an excellent demonstration of the uh, hooking up of a typical PTO-driven three-point implement. Thanks for watching.